Thank you, Busoga Health Forum, for inviting me here today. My name again is Mrs. Walusi Mbimeri Jackie, nutritionist of St. Francis Hospital in Zambia. And I'm here to take you through today about, in, uh, about nutrition and breastfeeding, as we've seen in the title. So I'm going to start, I'm going to start off right away. Uh, let's go to the next slide, please. Uh, nutrition situation in Uganda. Yes, nutrition situation in Uganda. So we see that uh, the Uganda Demographic Health Survey is carried out every after five years to obtain information on the health status of the population according to UDHS 2016. So that's after five years. So we, we are still using the one for 2016. And according to the UDH, UDHS 2016, uh, what they found in infant and young child nutrition is as follows. 9.6 of all babies are born with a low birth weight. Uh, and to say that nutrition plays a very important role in contributing to the weight of the, of the child, yes. Then children, six to 59 months, 29% of these children were stunted. That's low weight, low height for age, meaning their height was not enough for their age. 11% were underweight, that's low weight for age. 4% wasted, that's low weight for height. And only 66% of children under five years, of children under five years at that time, were initiated, initiated on breastfeeding within the first hour of life. And then only 66% of children were exclusively breastfed. And we see that these digits, these percentages, these percentages are very low. We aim for at least 100%, at least 90%. Eh? So let's go to the next slide. Then 53% of children under five were anemic. And we also noticed that anemia, there is iron deficiency anemia, and iron, we have food sources of iron. So iron can be gotten from food, that's nutrition. Then maternal nutrition still from the UDHS for 2016, what they got from, from maternal nutrition, 9% of women 15 to 49 years were thin. And if a woman is thin and they get pregnant, it, con it might contribute to low birth weight for the child. Then women who are overweight and obese increase from 17% to 24%. We see that overweight and obesity in women or in, let me say, pregnant women, as I'm talking about maternal nutrition here, in pregnant women, it could lead to things like gestational diabetes, and this, this can affect the growing baby too in the, in the womb. Then 32% of women, 15 to 49 years, were anemic. Still, that is a sign of poor nutrition somewhere in these women. Next slide. Um, then importance of nutrition. So as we're here to talk about nutrition and breastfeeding, we say, why is nutrition important in our day-to-day -day lives? Adequate nutrition is required for, first of all, why do we need adequate nutrition? For developing, for growing, for maintaining, replacing and repairing cells and tissues, developing, growing. That is when you, when you, look, at, when you look at proteins in our bodies, proteins are bodybuilding foods. They help in developing us, growing, repairing or worn out body cells and tissues. That's adequate nutrition. Then it's still required for resisting, fighting infection, recovering from illness. As we here talk about breastfeeding mostly, we see that when a child is breastfed, when a child breastfeeds more, they build the breast, the, the breast milk helps them build their immunity. The antibodies in breast milk help them build their immunity. So that helps them fight off infection and, and recover from illnesses very fast. Adequate nutrition too is required for producing energy warmth, movement, and work. Here we say that if you're not eating food, you won't have energy. We need energy to do different activities and then warmth to movement and work. Adequate nutrition is required too for carrying out chemical processes in the body, such as digestion. Digestion can take place when your nutrition is, is bad, when you're not eating good for your body, yes. Then still on under importance of nutrition, we look at poor nutrition. Poor nutrition increases our risk of deficient growth and development. Let me give an example of 
in let me say low proteins in in children children who are not taking enough um bodybuilding foods you find most of them with um brown hair brown silky hair that is deficient growth the hair is not growing properly and then there is the 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 de delayed milestones at times deficient development because of the poor nutrition yes then pollution to increase the risk of illness and infection in that if you don't eat according to what your body needs you could easily get sick or get infections it increases the risk of death uh decreased uh, ability to work learn and perform in school so that if you're not eating just like let me say if someone is fasting their energy levels are low so it decreases your ability to work learn and perform in school yes uh next slide breastfeeding yes yeah, so as we say nutrition and breastfeeding so we look at breastfeeding next Breastfeeding is something we we've, we've, we've we finished a breastfeeding week early August and we are finishing the breastfeeding month the whole of August so it's why we are talking about breastfeeding today. So breastfeeding, early initiation of breastfeeding within the first hour after delivery. So we emphasize this a lot. Why do we emphasize this a lot? Is within that first hour of delivery, there is a milk that comes out of a mother's breast that's called colostrum. That milk is very nutritious for the baby. And when the baby misses it, it's not good for the baby. And other, another importance of early, early initiation of breastfeeding is when you initiate breastfeeding early, the mother's body tends to to start producing milk. But when you delay, the mother takes long to start producing milk, yes. And then we also recommend exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months. Timely initiation of complementary feeds at six months and continued breastfeeding up to two years and beyond. So we recommend exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months of life. Why do we recommend that? Because at that age, Babies, what they need most is found in breast milk. Usually, say breast milk is like a miracle. God created it with a purpose. Yes. So whatever the thing that at between six months, between zero to six months, is found in breast milk. We only advise, like the next point says, breast milk substitutes may be used on medical recommendation and should be used properly. We only recommend recommend the substitutes on on a medical recommendation when you see a mother needs them when a baby can sorry when a baby when a baby needs them but other than that we, ex we advise exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months and we say that most mothers can complain and say maybe the milk is not enough so they have to supplement uh we say that the more you breastfeed the more the, the milk comes eh? and um we also advise pumping if you can start pumping as early as the first day when you've given birth, oh, okay, maybe if you tell the first day you've given birth, at least two days after you've given birth and you keep storing the milk in the, in the freezer, you have a lot of stock of your breast, of, of breast milk for the baby. In that even, if, even if maybe you're going back to work, your freezer is full of stored breast milk. Yes. And then we, we, we advise timely initiation of complementary feeds at six months and continue breastfeeding up to two years and beyond. Where we advise timely initiation of complementary feeds at six months is that six months, these babies' bodies need more nutrients than what they're getting in breast milk from breast milk. So it's why we advise at six months, however much maybe your baby is very fat, is big enough, please start complementary feeding. Because the baby, the baby, if he's not if he's not started on complementary feeding, they are going to start cutting weight and going backwards because their body now needs more than what they can get from breast milk. Then uh, teach mothers how to express milk and cup feed if baby is unable to breastfeed. So we advise health professionals, most of, most of you, most of them know how to express breast milk. You teach mothers how to hand express breast milk because not all the mothers can afford the breast milk pumps, the pumps. So you teach them how to hand express breast milk using their hand and cup feed. We advise cup feeding a lot because the bottles tend to introduce infections into the babies due to poor hygiene. Yes. Next slide, please. Um, importance of breastfeeding, yes. So children who are breastfed for longer periods have lower rates of infectious disease and death than children who are breastfed for shorter periods 
or who are not breastfed at all. So we've not we've noticed this from different research done in the entire in the in the world. Children who are breastfed for longer periods of time have lower rates of infectious disease because breast milk has antibodies that build up the baby's immunity. Yes, so we advise breast milk, breastfeeding. It's better than cow's milk, better than the other substitutes. Yes. Longer periods of breastfeeding are associated with a reduction in a child's risk of being overweight and obese. This is, this is usually seen in adulthood that children who are breastfed, who breastfeed for a longer time, have a lower risk of developing things like diabetes in adulthood too, or getting obese. Yes. Towards the end of the year, they will arrange it. And then breastfeeding could protect you from breast cancer, diabetes, and ovarian cancer. Now, this is for the mother. Sorry, Mr. Mr. Vilonji, kindly, Mary, unmute your microphone. Miss Mary, yes. Sorry, we had the, some members have not muted their microphones and they keep interrupting your presentation. We ask you all members, please, when you join in, mute your microphone to avoid interrupting the discussion. Miss Mary, can you continue, please? Okay, so uh, breastfeeding could protect you from breast cancer. That's for the mother, breast cancer, diabetes, and ovarian cancer. Breastfeeding promotes health brain development. That's for the baby. It's convenient too since breast milk is at the right temperature and available at any time it does not need you to look for a saucepan to prepare it does not need you to look for a warmer and start maybe heating it up looking for a matchbox it's always readily available and it's cheap you don't need to buy it you're not putting in any money to buy it even the donated breast milk in the breast milk bank at our hospital it's for free it's not for buying yes so breast milk is cheap and then, and then we also say that breast breastfeeding strengthens the bond between the mother and the baby, because the baby gets to know this is my mother. And yes. Uh, so the next next slide, please. What to eat when breastfeeding? So this is for the mothers. What to eat when breastfeeding? Because many ask, what 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 should I eat? What should I not eat? So that picture is just picture there is just to show you that what you should eat, you should eat a variety. There is fish, there are bananas, there is a guava, there are bell peppers, there is bread, there is an orange. So you eat a variety of foods, as I'm going to explain in the next slide. Next slide, please. So what to eat when breastfeeding? At a glance, eat a well-balanced diet that includes plenty of fiber, plenty of fiber from whole grain bread, nuts, pulses, fruits and vegetables. Why eat, why eat a diet rich in fiber? Fiber helps with any constipation problems. Because we say that most pregnant women and all lactating mothers have a problem of constipation. So fiber helps to fight off constipation. And fiber also helps, let me say, in mothers who are who have, who have had gestational diabetes and is still going on even after giving birth. Fiber helps to control glucose release into your bloodstream. So it helps to, to manage your glucose levels in the body. Then proteins, what you should eat, proteins. Proteins, examples of proteins, we have lean meat. We advise lean meat, not fatty meat. Chicken, fish, eggs, nuts, pulses, those are beans and lentils. These foods are a good source of iron. And we say that what does iron do in our bodies? Iron helps in blood formation. As a mother, as a woman is pregnant, as a woman gives birth, their iron needs increase during pregnancy and even after giving birth because they are sharing their blood with someone else. So, and then we, we see that at, at delivery too, a woman loses some blood too. So you need to up your iron levels to make more blood for your body. And these foods can provide you with 
with, with iron to make blood for your body. Another use of the proteins, uh, why you should include the proteins in your diet, is the proteins help to repair the worn out body cells, body tissues, because as a woman gives birth, there, there are some tissues that have been damaged, worn out, so the proteins help to repair them in your body, yes. And they also help in fast healing. They may say you've had a cesarean section or there are stitches, the proteins help in fast healing of the wounds on your body, yes. Then uh, what you should eat and drink plenty of fluids, six to eight glasses a day. You will need to drink plenty of fluids, replace the fluid that your, boy, your baby takes. Water, milk, herbal tea, porridge or unsweetened fruit juices are, are all a good choice. So this point is well explained. You need to drink plenty of fluids, replace the fluid your baby takes through breast milk. Because if the mother is not drinking plenty of fluids, she's going to get dehydrated. Other than that, even the milk supply is going to reduce because you know milk, breast milk is liquid. You need to put liquid into your body. These others, let me say the proteins, the carbohydrates, the fruits and vegetables, they add on the nutrients in the breast milk, but you need to put a liquid so that you get a liquid out of your breast. Yes, so it's why you need to take at least six to eight glasses of water or milk or any liquid that you can take a day, but not alcohol. Limit caffeine and alcohol as it may cause colic for the baby. We say that caffeine and alcohol, caffeine could affect the pressure of the mother too. And alcohol could cause colic for the baby, yes. Because these two substances are heavy for the baby's stomach because whatever the mother takes, it goes to the breast milk and the baby takes it through the breast milk. So these substances are, are kind of heavy for the baby's stomach at that time or it is another time. So maybe it could end up with colic because of that. So limit and have alcohol and caffeine, but bad your breastfeeding, by the way. But it's a good varied diet. Breastfeeding moms require breastfeeding moms require an extra 450 calories a day. But doesn't, but that doesn't mean overdosing on empty calories from sugar or refined carbohydrates. So here I say breastfeeding mothers require an extra 450 calories a day, but not overdosing on empty calories. So if you require more calories, don't don't go and eat chapati and eat mandazi and eat sweets and eat biscuits because you you want to get more calories. Opt for the healthier healthier sources of calories in our diet. A balanced health diet will help you and your little one get all the vitamins, proteins, minerals, and calories that you need without adding excess weight. Yes. But if you do snack in the unhealthy snacks, you're going to add excess weight. Then, so some will ask you, how do I ensure a balanced diet? We have the five finger model in nutrition. The thumb, as you see in the picture, the thumb represents carbohydrates. Those are what we call food on the plate, or in Uganda, a meri, eh? food on the plate. Then the first finger, the first finger after the thumb, that represents animal protein. Animal protein, we have the meat, fish, milk, eggs, etc, chicken. Then the third one, third finger, represents plant protein. Plant protein is where we have the guinnets, the beans, the peas, soya, etc. The fourth finger is vegetables. The fifth finger are fruits. So most people confuse protein and carbohydrate. What you should know is carbohydrate in our normal, normal, normal language is yemeri, yeah? protein yemva, vegetable invendira. Yeah? So that is, let me say, don't, don't, don't put, because you find most people having carbohydrate on the plate, maybe with a vegetable and there are no proteins. Make sure each and every finger there is present. And some, some usually put maybe animal protein only and forget plant protein. For pregnant and lact okay, for lactating women, women who are breastfeeding, we advise to put at least both of them, a plant and animal protein, because your body needs a lot to add what it has lost through pregnancy, giving birth and yes, lactation. Eh? Yes. So that's the five finger model that you can use to ensure a balanced diet on your plate. Next slide, please. So what, what may affect breast milk supply? Breast milk supply. What affects breast milk supply? Point number one, 
good attachment is one of the keys to successful breastfeeding. The way you attach the baby on the breast, we advise when you're putting the baby on the breast, if I could maybe just show you physically, I didn't put a picture here. Sorry about that. The mother, the mother has to make sure the baby is not holding only the nipple. Because if the baby is only pulling the nipple, the mother is going to get wounds on the breast. You make sure the areola, the black part of the breast is also inside the baby's mouth. And then the mother's hand, this other hand, is under the baby's bum hmm, for support of the baby. Then the mother is advised to, to sit straight. Preferably, if you can put, if you can get a chair that is straight, don't, don't, don't slant. Or maybe you can put a pillow behind whereby you, or, or don't lean forward, whereby you, you, you're pulling, you're, you're bringing your breast to the baby. You bring the baby to the breast, but don't bring the breast to the baby. Because when you bring the breast to the baby, your back is going to end up paining and you get tired of breastfeeding. You sit, straight, you sit straight and then bring the baby to the breast. Yes. So that's good attachment. It's one of the keys to successful breastfeeding. So that mother is not tired of breastfeeding because of the back pains and what. Then waiting too long to start breastfeeding, as I said earlier on, early initiation of breastfeeding within the first hour of delivery. If you wait too long to start breastfeeding, the body is not being, the body takes long to know that someone has come on earth and they need breast milk. So it affects the, the supply, the breast milk supply. Yes, so it's why we advise all health workers, mostly the midwives who are there in, uh, in the delivery, in the labor wards, to, to ensure early initiation of those breastfeeding of, the, of those newborns within the first hour of birth, yes. They're not breastfeeding often enough. That is also a problem. Because we say that breast, breasts operate on supply and demand, as the next point says. They operate on supply and demand. The more you empty the breast, the more, the, the more, the more, the more milk is produced. And we say that uh, there is uh, more science to this. There is that hormone oxytocin that is stimulated to produce breast milk. When the baby keeps suckling, the brain knows, okay, there is someone that needs breast milk down here. So I'll keep producing breast milk. But if the suckling reduces, meaning the number of times that you breastfeed reduce, the brain up in the brain, the signals think, okay, maybe they are winning the person off. So I have to reduce the supply. So not breastfeeding often enough can cause a reduction in the breast milk. So you need to breastfeed at least at least every after two hours, at least every after two hours at least for those for those newborn babies because they sleep a lot. But make sure at least every after two hours you're waking them up to breastfeed them. Then supplementing with formula. Supplementing with formula also can cause a, a reduction in the in your breast milk supply. As we say, breast breasts operate on <coughs> on supply and demand. When you supplement with, with formula, the time that you have used to breastfeed and maybe cause an increase in the supply, you're putting formula. So that could cause a, a, a decrease in the supply. Then stress. Stress is the number one killer of breast milk supply, especially in the first weeks of first weeks after delivery. We see that these new mothers, maybe after delivery, mostly let me say the first time mothers, they're trying to get used to the baby, trying to find out how do I breastfeed. And maybe their family members, everyone is giving this, this advice, this advice. So stress is the number one killer of breast milk supply. The advice maybe the, the fathers out there, the mothers out there, the sisters, when you have a, a new mother in your home, try and take care of them. Try and um, take away maybe other, try and help them do other chores, eh? other house chores as, as, they, as they adjust and learn about their, their baby, how to breastfeed feed them, how to take care of them. Yes. So they can have a good breast milk supply. Then eating or drinking too little. As I said, breast milk is liquid. If you don't put liquid into your body, maybe, let me say, maybe if you wake up and eat, and eat cassava and an egg, a boiled egg and a banana, that is okay for nutrients, but you need to put liquid because breast milk is a liquid. You need to put liquid so that the breast milk can be produced. Yes. So not eating or drinking too little is also a problem. I usually advise breastfeeding mothers whenever you're breastfeeding, every time you're breastfeeding, get a cup of water or well, maybe like warm water or a cup of tea and be sipping it. Each time it will help you 
because if if you say i have to take eight cups of, of water a day it may be too hard for you to keep up with it but if you know every time i'm breastfeeding i have to hold a cup of water and be drinking then getting sick diarrhea vomiting decreases appetite so getting sick and maybe you get diarrhea you get vomiting decreases appetite this could this could affect your breast milk supply because there we say it could lead to dehydration and you're losing fluid from your body still same with vomiting and decreased appetite um next slide please all right okay thank you you are what you eat let's make healthy choices that's the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening to me. Yes.